and welcome to this week's installment of the Karamak Research Seminar Series. My name is Anthea Henderson. This seminar series is held every Wednesday and the seminars have been a staple research activity at Karamak for the past few years. They are intended to provide researchers with an opportunity to share their research projects and research strategies. Training on the various aspects of the research process is also part of our scope of activities. The objective of the seminars is to foster a thriving research environment at Caravac, which will aid in staff reaching the UWI's target of, okay, um, target of two publications per year per staff. These sessions also provide necessary support to MPhil PhD candidates completing their research degrees. It is our goal through this initiative to build stronger research relationships with our colleagues in academia and industry across the Mona campus, across the UWI, and of course, across the world. This will help us make meaningful strides towards not only theorizing about ourselves and our experiences as Caribbean people, but also in sharing such vital information with a global audience. So again, I want to extend a warm welcome to you all. This week, we are joined by presenters, Messrs. Bjorn Beringer, Per Ole Uphouse, and Professor Harold Rao from Germany. They will be your presenters this afternoon. The topic is entitled Mobile Media Communication, a Research Agenda for Location-Based Services. I invite Ms. Christine Moxham to make the introductions. So Ms. De Ms. Uh, Moxham, please be on standby. Um, so she'll, she'll be making the introductions to Messrs. Beringer, Uphouse, and Professor Rao. And then after her introductions, we will have the presentations begin. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting or introducing rather today's presenters. Bjorn Bringer is a public relations consultant at the Faculty of Transport, Sport, Tourism, Media, and a lecturer at the Institute for Media Management, Professorship for Communication Management at Osfalia University of Applied Sciences, Salzgitter, Germany. He holds a master's degree in communication management from the university. Currently, he is involved in the project Location-Based Services in Regional Media Communication, EFRE funding. His research interests include the role of location-based service services in hyperlocal communication, communication marketing, and strategic communication. Pearl Uphouse is a research assistant at the Institute for Media Management Professorship for Communication Management, also at Oswaldia University. He's currently working on his PhD project, Locative News, Local N location-based hyperlocal scenarios for successful social media communication at Leibniz Science Campus. Mr. Uphouse is focusing on measuring the use of localization technologies and has authored several international publications, among them a paper for the European Media Management Association 2020 that was nominated for the Best Paper Award. He has been coordinating the project Location-Based Services in Regional Media Communication, EFRE funding, and also lectures at Oswaldi University in the fields of statistics and journalism. His research interests include social and behavioral implications of location-based services and hyperlocal media communication, more specifically how successful social media communication on a hyperlocal level can be achieved through participatory location-based services. And Professor Harold Rao is Professor for Communication Management also at Asfali University. He's a, his research, uh, he's a research representative rather for the faculty and the head of the Communication Management Graduate Program. He earned a Business Administration degree from Hagen University and a doctoral degree in journalism from Dortmund University and habilitated in communication and media sciences at Leipzig University. Besides articles, he published monographs on benchmarking, key account management, newsroom marketing, 
journalism quality, TV market structures, and invitation to communication sciences, and the writing code for sustainable writing routines. His research projects focus the structures of broadcasters and production enterprises in the TV market, market realities for public service broadcasting, and business model innovation in media management. His interests include theoretical implications of PSB media and merit goods. He is a fellow of the Network Loren and has acquired funding for innovative teaching at the university level. Besides his academic career, he worked for more than 25 years in business media as newspaper editor, television and broadcast radio presenter and reporter, and as a consultant. Professor Rao is credited with innovating Germany's first business television program controlled by federal media agencies and realized on countable movie and media projects for DX and NYSE listed companies. Let us make welcome our presenters for this afternoon. Thank you, Christine, for this really detailed introduction and uh, all these uh, welcoming flowers you, uh, you uh, gave to us. Um, we you. would like to start in this afternoon um, with an introduction to location-based services. And uh, we prepared some slides for you just to make, um, um, just to show that um, location-based services is a quite interesting field uh, which is, um, yeah, which is uh, which is uh, separated to different uh, to different levels, and um, we are really we are really um, uh, it's it's far as it was really really uh, tough to um, uh, to come deeper into this field of research. And Paolo, perhaps you can share your screen with us that we can have a look into the slides we prepared for you um, this evening. For us, it's night. So outside, it's all right, uh, already dark. Uh, and we have um, 10 o'clock PM. And there are our slides. And we would like to, uh, to lead you into mobile media communication. And we would like to show you our research again uh, agenda for location-based services. Um, why so? Uh, for us, this topic might be a really good blueprint to show you um, how to research on topics uh, we not really know quite good at the current at the current status. Uh, so, if you will, if you are interested in our complete complete research agenda and in uh, all the things happen. Uh, happened to us uh, during uh, during the uh, the research uh, project, the first research project funded by European Union, which was called uh, uh, location based services in regional media communications. Uh, and perhaps you can flip the slide to the next one. Uh, we had uh, we have um, challenges researching on media innovations, uh, a publication, um, and a paper brought into um, this uh, really cool uh, cool book, um, Media Management Matters, edited by Ulrike Rohn and Tom Evans, uh, which, is, uh, the, which is president and co-president of Media Management, um, or, uh, European Media Management Association. And the Emma um, was, um, was searching for, um, for examples, for research examples, for challenging reach research uh, examples, uh, where um, where faculty uh, was on its way to um, to get into you know, to to get deeper into into really detailed um, detailed topics like location based services. So we brought in our research agenda and our research. Um, experience on location-based services very um, very short and compact into this book. So if you're interested in, uh, we will happy to share it with you. Just give us uh, a short email and uh, we can mail it to you. Um, so we, uh, we started off with location-based services in regional media communication. And our target was to identify opportunities and risks of uh, location-based services for regional media communication. Why so? For, uh, from our point of view, most of the regional media, like uh, even local or regional newspapers, um, 
are the are the major are the major actors are the major um, the major stakeholders uh, to implement uh, location based services for um, uh, the the usage for them is quite uh, quite good and they can 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 really uh, can 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 really um, get get a share from it. So uh, the major uh, the major target was then to search for success models and recommendations for action with concrete success factors and evaluation methods uh, for the digital transformation of regional media communication. And we made use, for example, um, we made use of uh, several research done before on an international level. Uh, what were the challenges uh, if, we, if we look all over it? Um, we have, uh, we've, we found out, firstly, we found out that was one of the first outcome of the project, that we have really unclear structures in the industry. And how can you research industry or the, the, the industry itself uh, when the structures is, are, uh, are not clear? You have to make clear or you have to clear the structure. And then uh, in the project, we have um, partners from the branch, from, from the industry. And uh, we found out that the timeframes and the priorities of industry were quite high, quite, quite deferring. So from, uh, from our timeframe and from our priorities. So we, we wanted to look into into. Uh, we wanted to, to answer research questions and the industry wanted to, uh, to get really concrete success factors and, uh, um, and, and, and action modes. So uh, the, the third thing we, we found out right at the beginning, uh, we found that um, innovations really showed slow diffusion in media industries. And this was quite interesting and um, from our point of view, it hinders uh, still um, the, uh, the usage and the implementation of location-based services in, in media communication, especially uh, in the regional media communication. All we did was at the end for there is no or there is less diffusion of the technology. Uh, all the things we did with the audience, all what we were able to research in the audience was and is hypothetical. So um, it's still, there's still a lack of knowledge combining LBS and regional or local media communication. For all these newspaper publishers, for us, the first, the first movers, or where we expected that they, these ones would be the first movers, um, all these newspapers didn't implement location-based services at all. And it is still like that and we found out that a colleague in america uh, she made a study in 2013 and uh, and the, the hypothesis she um she proved were the same we found five years later in germany so it's a phenomenon it's an international research phenomenon um and that was an interesting outcome one of the first really interesting outcomes of the project um, what we what we see is that all over the world, in the Americas and in Germany, and in Europe or in Scandinavia, Northern Europe as well, uh, regional media communication is in transition. Uh, newspapers um, are not able to earn any any money, uh, and uh, with that, economically, with this economically pressure, there's only there are only few possibilities. Uh, for investing into new technologies. So we have this transition, this technology transition, or this technically, technically, technically uh, visible transition, but uh, this transition is merely financeable. And what we see is uh, with the upcoming uh, new usage routines, uh, we find a socially uh, switch or a socially uh, transition as well. Um, so at the end, and by already planning our project, we found out that far more, far more things are possible to implement and to do with uh, location-based services, with geolocation. But 
merely nothing is really uh, uh, implemented for a long-term view. So we decided to broaden our market view. And this was uh, one of the, the, the crucial steps we did in uh, two years ago. And we faced, this is the last point on this slide, uh, uh, with all these uh, hindering factors and with all these not implement, implementing uh, solutions in the industry, uh, our challenges for prototyping are so, so high and we still, we still hang on that. So um, our reactions. First, we see these unclear structures in the industry. Our re reaction was to integrate a sound market exploration study. This was not planned in advance. So we, uh, uh, we, we, we stepped back one step and we saw, hey, we have to do more basic research on location-based services. And we have to explore the market even broader than we expected we have to. So we took the step back and then we lost. No, we, we, we won or lost, <laughs> as you would like to see it. Uh, just one year of research. So we, um, we took this year to really share with all our readers um, in our contributions, uh, we shared uh, a broad and overall market view, um, in integrating several uh, industry industries and not only the media industry. Uh, reactions on the slow diffusion in media industries with media communication in transition economically, technically, and socially. Um, we made this uh, already mentioned replication study proving this ongoing slow diffusion caused by economic pressure in the market. Um, uh, Amy schmitz uh, was the one who made the first study in the, in the United St States uh, in 2013, and we um, replicated this study in 2019. And we are here in a research seminar. And do not underestimate the possibilities you can, uh, 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 the possibilities you, you, you have by replicating already existing studies just two or three or four years later. The outcome was really convincing um, uh, for us that we are on the right, on the right track that our research is on the right track. So that we are with our thesis and hypotheses uh, are not, not alone in academia. And we broadened the approach and permanently uh, aligned uh, the me methodology. Uh, don't stuck with met methods, please. If you are uh, in, a research, uh, in a research job, you do not please do not stuck to methodology or to methods or single methods. Be broad, be open, and be surprisable. Um, just remember, setting uh, and writing a PhD thesis um, is really, is, is tough. And if you decided to write a PhD thesis or, um, or a master thesis, even a master thesis, you always have to expect that anywhere on the world, there's another guy, another girl working on the same topic, working probably on the same research question, working on the same theses. Um, and then you have to react on that. So it's an ongoing process. And please be, um, you know, be open. Go, go with open eyes through academia around the globe. And for me, it's so, it's so wonderful. So we started this session with, uh, with this wonderful Caribbean music. And uh, this Zoom technology gives us the possibility to really share on, an, on, an, on a new level. So uh, coming back to the slides, um, the reactions on the hypothetical audience research and the lack of knowledge combining LBS on, and regional local media communication was to integrate a systematic literature review on hyperlocal media communication and on context marketing. So we have two, uh, two literature, literature reviews and uh, I'm very glad that uh, Annika uh, joined in. Uh, she was a member of my team um, uh, for, th for five years, I think. Yeah, yes, for five years. And she's now uh, doing her PhD in Sweden uh, at this uh, well-renowned uh, business school in Jönköping. 
Uh, and she made the first, this hyperlocal media communication um, literature review was one of her um, assets. Some more we will show later when Paola is presenting. Uh, last thing, the reactions on the, uh, on the aspect that far more is possible than already implemented. Um, and our reaction on this, um, on this, uh, uh, this, this generated knowledge that market view must really be broader. We broadened the approach with, a, uh, with this, um, from my point of view, outstanding market exploration. We, uh, we developed a new method uh, and implemented it to, um, to find really technologies um, hypothetical, hypothetically being able to be integrated into, uh, into regional media communication and uh, using uh, location technologies. And to perhaps making use for, um, for creating locative news. And then uh, we realized that we have to think internationally. And we did then uh, a Delphi study uh, with an international focus. And Paola will introduce this study for you on the next slides. Uh, yeah, slow diffusion uh, in media industry is, uh, th that's one of the outcomes. Uh, probably you, you can sh share this, uh, or you, you can, can also state, uh, make, make, a, make a similar statement on that. Uh, so for us, it, uh, it, this, this is one of the, uh, the hypotheses uh, really set. All right, uh, to identify opportunities and risks of LBS for regional media communication, this was uh, the target and uh, to establish success models and recommendations for action with concrete success factors and evaluation methods for the digital transformation of regional media communication we saw these challenges. Um, and now I think we can hand over to Paola. Right, uh, we saw the following challenges. Um, uh, hypothetical audience research, uh, lack of knowledge combining LBS and regional local uh, media communication. Um, right, regional media communication is in transition uh, with uh, in, in the fields of economy, technically and socially. And as mentioned before, there's far more possible than already implemented. And there are several challenges of prototyping. But now let's uh, take a look at our uh, project. Uh, let's take a, uh, an overview of this. We began, um, it, it spans the following subject. It uh, began with uh, user acceptance uh, research in uh, which we discovered the UTAUT model to be especially suitable in this field of LBS. Um, here depicted in the version UTAUT 2, adjusted for LBS, uh, more on this later. UTAUT stands for Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology. And um, the next step was a quantitative user survey. We also did uh, focus group discussions. Um, we made uh, this huge market exploration mentioned earlier. We did these uh, strategic literature reviews, the Delphi study, which is now ongoing with international experts. Um, and what's, uh, what's more is a planned uh, a prototyping approach. Um, with usability testing. Resulting from this are quite a lot of publications you can list it, uh, you can see listed below. Um, these are quite a lot because of course, in this rather competitive uh, research field, uh, publications are considered uh, kind of our currency. So there's quite a lot of these and all of these are also of of course, individually conducted uh, studies, often uh, with findings from a further study resulting in starting points for new studies. Right, and uh, going hand in hand with these publications, there are also, uh, we, we also attended uh, many different conferences, of course. Yes, I will continue uh, from this point on. Often uh, publication goes on or hand in hand with the participation on the conference. 
as you can see here, starting in 2017, for example, on the European Media Management Association, and also continuing in 2018 in different international and also uh, national um, conferences. Um, therefore, you can see here um, some other, you know, uh, conferences, especially the DG PUC, uh, kind of an annual conference of media economic uh, division of this one in, in Germany, and also some special, very specialized LBS conferences, conferences in Vienna. And um, yes, um, it goes on with uh, kind of conferences uh, last year and also uh, and, uh, and this year especially. Uh, we would like to mention as uh, the um, European Media Management Association and as well the World Media Economics and Management Conference. And as you can see right here, some um, upcoming uh, conferences this year. Just perhaps to add, uh, um, you mentioned before uh, that two publications a year is uh, the target. Um, we count uh, conference paper, conferences papers uh, as publications, Most, uh, mostly in Germany, we, we count these as publications. So we come with that project, we come um, to, yeah, we, we, we can, we, we get to, to, uh, to a share of uh, up to four papers, uh, up to four papers a year for all of the, uh, for all of the staff. And most of the, the papers are done by uh, up to four authors. Right. So let's continue with some uh, with a more detailed look at uh, some of the some of these publications. The first one being uh, acceptance as core factor for the success of LBS. This was a quantitative uh, survey investigating the level of acceptance of LBS and its influencing factors. Conducted with uh, 243 inhabitants of the region 38. Uh, Region 38 that's uh, derived from the postal code of uh, Salzgitter, where um, where the Australia is situated and its surrounding counties, which also have this postal code, 243 inhabitants of this region, and uh, in this that's where we uh, where we discovered the aforementioned technology acceptance model, which proved to be very useful and. Uh, which you can see on the, on the right hand side, depicted on the right hand side, which we later adjusted for LBS, as you can see here. And uh, we used this in following studies. I see uh, some mentions, oops, some mentions in the chat. Okay. Okay, I will just continue. Um, the, Next study being location-based services in tourism, an empirical analysis of factors influencing usage behavior, with the main question we asked being, which uh, factors influence the usage behavior of location-based services in tourism, and what are the resulting opportunities for tourism providers? As you can see here, we um, used a modified version of the Utah model uh, for tourism with um, three of the predictors, uh, namely performance expectancy, effort expectancy, and hedonic motivation, proving to be um, significant in their influence on the usage intention of location-based services in tourism. In other words, uh, the touristic LBS apps uh, have to be, uh, or must facilitate touristic uh, activities must be simple and easy to use and should be uh, enjoyable. As a third step, we conducted focus group discussions um, with up to 50 participants. We conducted these group discussions with uh, relevant stakeholders from different um, sectors like tourism, culture, sports, journalism, and the trade or the service sector. Um, and as you can see here on the right, this is also an um, excerpt from our large study from this whole study of the focus group discussions. And um, it become, or they can see the barriers. We're focusing here on the barriers because these are becoming uh, very um, apparent 
here the uh, um, the end user on the one hand and on the other hand the intra-organizational barriers or the barriers seen by intra-organizational people um, for the end user it must be uh, the app must be also downloaded and installed this was one of the barriers also on the other side um, nearly clear that the costs are quite important also um, data protection law or data security issues uh, also insufficient uh, knowledge on the sides of the intra-organizational people that we see. Um, yeah. Right. As a next step, we decided to investigate LBS as a means of business model innovation in journalism in particular, because journalism turned out to be a quite interesting, um, so to say, uh, sector for investigating LBS. And what we did here was uh, based on individual interviews. You can see in the picture um, below, uh, based on individual interviews first, um, we noticed that LBS were uh, um, seen by uh, local media managers as a means to uh, increase the interest of users, which is why uh, in a second uh, step, we conducted focus group discussions decided to make kind of an abductive approach with focus discuss group discussions as a second step in which um, surprisingly the participants did not see LBS as a means of business model innovation. So in the last step, we also conducted follow-up telephone interviews uh, to, uh, yes, to, to kind of investigate why this is the case. So the research question you can see here kind of developed over this uh, course. Um, and at the end, it was, um, what role do location-based technologies play in the development of news media organizations' business models? Um, the data generated this way was uh, then underwent uh, qualitative content analysis. And here you can see some of the most interesting results depicted in this table. Um, which is also an excerpt of the study uh, depicting the obstacles to experimentation with technologies. First off, uh, so-called waiting for best practices mentality as uh, some of the participants named it became apparent. Uh, furthermore, some, uh, yes, again, privacy protection laws and costs were considered to be uh, main barriers as well as lack of staff. And surprisingly, also a huge distinction being made between journalists on the one hand and experts for digital media, on the other hand, being different people so that journalists themselves, so the people who, who make the content, are not really the technological experts. So um, in the next step, um, as already mentioned before, we also made this market exploration. This wasn't initially planned. This was uh, kind of resulting from the fact that, uh, yes, uh, we wanted to know what the, the LBS market looks like. This was actually pretty much in the beginning of our project. We wanted to know what the LBS market looks like and uh, realized that there was no sufficient overview yet. So we just uh, kind of decided to make one on our own. And this was our market exploration uh, with, the, uh, with the intention to, uh, to show trends and success factors. And what we did was uh, a quantitative content analysis based on a selection of newsletters, as you can see in the phase one of, our, uh, of this, um, this market exploration depicted on the right which uh, resulted uh, in a huge database, which, uh, was then, uh, which, which then became our category system, which we analyzed to make things short. And this uh, resulted in uh, uh, several interesting findings, such as indoor navigation being surprisingly strongly represented, even more so than outdoor navigation. The um, price model of choice, for location-based services being to um, provide the apps free or with a subscription option or uh, in-app advertising. 
also uh, more uh, or further uh, transfer the future seem to be uh, augmented reality and location-based gaming. These were some of our main findings from this market exploration, which lasted quite long as uh, previously mentioned, but generated some really interesting results. Right here. And next up came our Delphi study, which- Yes, the Delphi study. Number you is right now our ongoing step. Um, we are conducted um, uh, 37 international interviews with international experts from the science and also the business sector. It resulted in nearly 20 plus hours material and all this material was um, analyzed in a qualitative way, qualitative content analysis uh, to be um, exactly. And um, the second iteration um, nearly starts next week and they are going to send out the questionnaire to all the uh, 37 experts just to um, condense, right, thank you, just to condense the statements made in the interviews, always focusing on the consensus between the whole um, participants. And the main or you can say overarching goal of this step from the Delphi study is to identify trends also um, have a look on possible scenarios we are, um, related to our research questions and also to create a condensed look into the future. Jan, perhaps it's, uh, it's quite cool um, to mention that we uh, used uh, MAXQDA software and it helped us quite well around uh, with, these, um, with this content analysis. Um, and secondly, uh, we used a, a really German-based routine to, uh, to analyze uh, um, the interviews, the conducted interviews. And we found out that this is really a, 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 an internationally not really renowned um, routine, but uh, it's working really, really, really well, even in comparison with, with all, the, uh, all the other routines used for content analysis. Just to mention that, if you would like to, to, to get deeper into details, just uh, contact uh, Björn or Paola and they, will can, and they can show you some, um, some screenshots or uh, share the screen. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Right. Also, our la last step of this, um, right, David Singh White also comes in. Um, yes, seventh step of, of our project. Um, this is yeah, also a planned step. We are going to um, to do a kind of, or not a kind of, we, do, we are doing an experiment. We are um, conducting eye tracking for existing, for existing participatory LBS. And um, the results of this process or this um, step may lead into the conceptualization of a prototype. And um, this is yeah, also ongoing, or I would say right now our team members are quite uh, working on it. Yes. And at this point, we would like to show you how um, our research from the um, project is linked to students' work. Uh, as a first example, I will yeah, just present you my master thesis, uh, which I conducted last year, or yes, and I was focusing on usable privacy and security in the context of uh, location-based services. I also um, conducted 21st international um, uh, interviews, also from business and science sector, and my overarching question was, which factors influence the usability or user-friendliness in designing and or using location-based services. Um, as you can see here on the right, this is also uh, just an excerpt of my, um, of my results. And here I just show uh, the uh, relation between the uh, topic on the, on the left, like usable data security in relation to um, the LBS usage. And uh, may per order, just do some clicking then we can see some more results. Thank you for that. Um, also, you can see here uh, that is, yeah, there was kind of a resulting or a need for a framework um, resulting in socio-ethical, regulatory and also technolog te technological factors. Um, also very apparent um, comes or comes the, the barriers, um, especially with the development effort also and um, especially the business interest of third parties to 
which are not really interested in designing or um, creating usability or um, data security usable. And also um, anti pattern and also um, a big lack of knowledge on this side. Um, my work, my master thesis, and I'm um, quite proud and honored um, by this is uh, right now in, pub in a publication process. And um, yeah, this was kind of the first uh, um, example of how research is linked to students' work. And Paola will give you a second very um, nice example of it. Right, another example uh, would be that after my master thesis, I got the chance to become part of the Leibniz Science Campus. Um, where I pursue my current PhD project, Locative News, uh, location-based hyperlocal scenarios for successful social media communication. And uh, we as a whole team feel very honored that our project is part of this as the Leibniz Science Campus is kind of uh, comparable to the Max Planck or Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. So uh, it will be kind of uh, premium league and uh, like, yes, um, mostly I, uh, mostly this is about the, the participatory aspect of location-based services. So the following questions are part of my uh, PhD project. Which content would users prefer to generate? Which uh, user-generated content would users like to receive? And in both cases, how, uh, uh, what role does the user's location play? And for example, also how much push messaging is desired and toler tolerable, etc. And uh, all of this um, above the uh, with with the uh, overarching question being: uh, Will local journalism be detached or replaced in a post digital age? And what kind of social process is behind the possible replacement of local journalism in the post digital age? or behind its continued existence. Right, so much uh, for my PhD project. And uh, as we promised in the beginning, we want to uh, establish kind of a research agenda for location-based services. And with uh, all these uh, publications that we presented to you, we feel like we are already able to do so uh, because uh, as we mentioned, our intention is to interpret the increase of digital solutions in regional media communication through recommendations for action and uh, success factors. And below you can see some of these, uh, some of the most important recommendations for action and success factors. For example, what uh, became apparent in pretty much all of our uh, studies was that the inclusion of relevant stakeholders into development and research processes is a fundamental uh, step. Um, also, this, these are uh, some uh, kind of preliminary results from our Delphi study, which is ongoing. Um, the, among the social scientific approaches and perspectives that uh, leading international experts perceive to be rather unexplored so far are ethical issues and uh, privacy issues, personalization aspects, and also side effects, uh, possible side effects of navigation. Um, and from a more technological approach uh, or perspective, the management of large data sets and hybrid uh, indoor outdoor mapping as well as location accuracy. And uh, something more to add here is that it's quite interesting to see that uh, from many perspectives, uh, from social scientific perspectives, as well as technological, many researchers in the Delphi study told us that uh, they feel like a shift into a, a kind of more social scientific approach uh, on LBS is necessary. So yes. So much for the first part of our research agenda and some more things uh, will be added yeah. by Bjorn now. I will continue with um, the last points of the research agenda. Um, there's always a need uh, for of research in the implementation of LBS as business model innovation in small and medium, uh, small and medium and media companies or companies in general, and also a need uh, for of research in the acceptance and implementation in different sectors like tourism, culture, businesses, or also journalism or other sectors. 
uh, building a regulatory framework for location-based services in Europe under the uh, GDPR is necessary, especially with the focus on uh, or focusing on usability, data privacy and security, and also socioethical factors. Last but not least, um, there should be a, a focus on participation aspects like user-generated content. And at this point, we are honored to have presented our um, research to you or with you and or shared our results with you. Uh, we are very happy that we had this chance and that we'll, like now I'll say, we are open for your question. And um, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen Peroli and um, uh, Bjorn, and of course, Professor Rao. This has been a very interesting uh, presentation on, a, on many levels, and we are going to open up the floor now for comments. I saw that the chat was uh, quite robust with conversation between Dr. White and Professor Rao. I do have one <laughs> or two comments, I know. <laughs> and I did take note of the link for post-digital participation because I'm particularly intrigued by that, Professor Rao. Did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, it, just two things. There's one, one first question from, uh, uh, from Alpha Orvika. Um, what strategy do you use for working with graduate students on projects and co-publishing? Uh, so this is, this is really a, a question going right into the core of the, uh, of the topic we would like to discuss today. Um, let, me, let me show uh, how Per Orle did it, his way at our university. He started with a, a bachelor thesis on location-based services. And he was able then uh, by, yeah, we supported him, sure, but he was able um, to, uh, to publish, um, uh, to publish his uh, bachelor, even his bachelor thesis. And it worked for, it was good work, even from our point of view. And then uh, you see that, um, that Per Ole continued his way at our university with, uh, with a master thesis, the first master, master thesis at our university combining several papers into a master thesis. Um, uh, we call it cumulative dissertation in Germany. So a cumulative uh, dissertation. It was the first one at master level done at our university. So uh, we see us uh, as, as the Premier League <laughs> at, at the Australia University uh, in doing research. And we, 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 we test several things with uh, students. So, but I think you, um, you wanted to know uh, who is on the paper. On the paper um, are these ones who worked with it. And sometimes it's useful to add the ones who initiated the uh, the whole project, who initiated uh, the um, the research ag agenda. So most of our papers and per all of perhaps you can can again show uh, show our uh, publication agenda uh, we presented um, in advance. And most of our papers um, are um, are led by uh, by a first author, often per Ola, and uh, had then some more authors on it. So you see it, oops. Uh, oh, it's black. Yeah. It was the right slide. So uh, yeah, just go back. So there we are. And you, you can see, uh, you can see there, um, we didn't, um, uh, the, if, you, if you look to 2019, the European Media Management Association, the annual conference in, in Limassol, um, represented uh, the hyperlocal news just to hype. Uh, this was a presentation Annika Ehlers did. Uh, I mentioned her before, uh, who is working now on her PhD in, um, in Sweden. Uh, and that was her work. Uh, and she presented it uh, by her own. Um, and then we had uh, at the DGPOK, the annual conference for the Media Economics Division in Cologne, um, we had this innovation diffusion for and uh, localization technologies in the production, distribution, and usage of mobile news. Uh, this was the outcome of a, of a broader approach. So there were, I think, four authors, uh, per order, uh, um, 
there were, I think, four authors on it. And we have this LBS 2019 paper of the 15th conference on location-based services um, with three authors on it. So all of our students who uh, are working on it, uh, they will be on, as mentioned, will be mentioned in, uh, as authors. And uh, sometimes they are single authors. And sometimes most of, most of, uh, in most cases, uh, we have two to four authors on the papers and um, uh, uh, all of them. Uh, and we see if we, if we work together on the papers and uh, to, um, to work on the, um, on the um, uh, on papers together is, is a special kind of, of uh, working procedure um, um, you should you should train during your PhD phase. Um, just train to work uh, collaboratively, and just train to work in a team, in, in an author's team. It helps you around. So we see here that that's quite good here in 2020. So we have um, uh, we have this uh, uh, this book um, this book chapter in the Media Management Matters. Uh, this was uh, this, this was mainly done by Annika and me. Um, uh, and only uh, only co-read, not written co-read by Per Ulle and Björn. Uh, so sometimes it's only uh, only the work uh, of the others to to read and to give um, to give some uh, some interesting aspects back. Uh, another point. Another point I would like to mention. I would like to show you this. Uh, um, Athena mentioned it already, or Chris was it? Chris, Christine. I just uh, Paola just switched to my screen. I will share my screen screen with you. Uh, desktop three. There we are. Um, you see there the uh, the, the website of uh, the post digital participation campus. And what we are doing there? There's the research design, and you see. Uh, that we work on post-digital participation with uh, with this uh, second uh, second wheel uh, of participatory um, thinking. So we have the methods, we have the design, and we have the critical reflection on it. Um, and then uh, in the project design, we will work uh, on individual competencies on social technical uh, assemblages and on social implications. And we integrate researchers from, uh, from business administration, from, um, uh, from uh, electrical engineering, electronical engineering, they call them, I think, uh, Elektrotechnik in German. Um, and we integrate media uh, research, media management and media research, and we uh, integrate education. Education is the major, uh, the major uh, topic uh, we integrated. And what we do there is that we work with uh, SLL projects, social living labs. This is the approach. This is the all over approach we try to, to integrate into the project. Um, and we would like to, uh, to implement um, uh, views from an, from an urban life. There are architects and engineers in. Um, and we will would like to to integrate the post digital education, and we would like to uh, um, to clear the definitions. So, what is post digital in an uh, what what is the post digital age? What what does post digital mean in the uh, in the different uh, in the in the different subjects for the different researchers coming from very different fields? And what we found was that. Um, uh, that the definition of narratives uh, differs um, if you if you argue uh, with an uh, with an engineer. An engineer has another uh, thinks completely different um, about narratives than a media researcher does. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's a really interesting project, and what we really can say is um, it's uh, Leibniz Science Campus is Premier League in Germany. And uh, for our small university, this was a really, 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 really big success. And to, to integrate Per Ole into this program, um, uh, yeah, we, we celebrated for days. Um, to, uh, uh, we, we have these, um, uh, these public research, uh, these non-university public research companies and communities. Uh, and we have Fraunhofer, we have Helmholtz, we have Leibniz, and we have Max Planck. 
which uh, which are different. They they are focusing different uh, different um, uh, different subjects and uh, and different uh, faculties, and. Um, these uh, non-university research institutes are really of high, high, high importance in Germany, uh, and most of the of the research money is, uh, or lots of research money is going to these uh, to these institutes. So I think I can stop my screen sharing. Wow, Professor Rao, that was, I, I'm almost spontaneously wanting to invite you back. I think we need to talk to Dr. White about a second <laughs> invitation on a number of levels. So on a num I have a question that I'm trying to squeeze in, but um, well, I'm looking at the clock. On a number of levels, uh, one is this whole idea of non-university research institutes. So what you might not know is that the University of the West Indies is trying to adjust thinking paradigm and also operations and functions to become more and more entrepreneurial. Not to say that we're not, but it needs to increase. And I think that that would be a, a vital topic for us to hear from, uh, because I'm sure that there are things that Caramac as a school could do to, to be vanguard on that process. Um, I, if I can, if, if, if the participants, people on, on the Zoom don't mind, I just have one quick question before we wrap. And it has to do, and I think it might just help our MPhil and PhD students who are, who are in the session. One of the things that you said, Professor Rao, is that we shouldn't, as researchers, start with methods, that we should move away from the tidy um, alignment of techniques that we thought that we would use. And I, I wonder if you could, in just two minutes, just give us a snippet of what that looks like. Because, and I say that because a, ne a number of us at Caramac have just completed uh, for publication, hopefully uh, a review, a reflection article on how we used mixed methods to answer some industry related questions about the media environment. But, but so what would you advise uh, MPhil and PhD researchers and also more senior researchers in terms of not looking at methods when we're about to design a piece of research, if you could Wait on that for a minute or two, and then we will mm. wrap. Uh, uh, my advice will be do not stuck with methods. Be flexible. Um, so there is only one method, always only one method to uh, uh, being able to answer your question, your research question. So you have to formulate your research question in a way that the method finally is clear. And for us, it was necessary to change the research question again and again and again, and to step back. And then if you have to change the research question, you also have to change the method. So I, I, I see many of, of, of students, many, many, many of students stuck into methods. So I'm good at interviews, qualitative interviews, or I'm good with in, in, in statistics, bullshit. Just you have to, or you come from the method and you form, formulate your research question by the method. But for me, this is the wrong way. And you see Paola today is always good, is, is also good in doing research. And he's, he had been substituting a faculty member for half a year in his age, not, not being 30. Um, uh, in the last in the last term, he substituted um, uh, a faculty teacher here in statistics, introducing statistics to bachelor uh, uh, undergraduates, and uh, he's good in statistics. Yes, he's good in quantitative analysis, but he's also good in the usage of MAXQDA mm. and to doing qualitative research. More than two minutes, I think, uh, two and a half. <laughs> but Living, Living, Livingston raised his hand. So. Oh, Dr. White, please go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to give you the context of how we met um, Professor Rao. It was in 2013 at the European Media Management Association's uh, conference. It was in Bournemouth, right? That's where it was? I can't recall now. Somewhere in London. Uh, the first, we first met, I think, in Los Angeles. Um, really? Okay. Uh, in 2007. 
Okay. Um, yes, wow. yes. It's been that, that long. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been that long. <laughs> but but we also we also met then in um in Bournemouth. Emma. Yes, that's right. The Emma conference and um Yvette Rowe was there with me. And we were telling you about our media management masters that we're designing and so on. So I'm happy that we've kept in touch. And, you know, Boyan traveled to Jamaica last year to come and yeah. present with us. So I'm happy that he was able to do the presentation <laughs> today because I know the pandemic yeah. broke out and he had to return to Germany immediately before the borders closed. Uh, but so he, but he met two beautiful Canadian girls, so everything was all right for him, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> On the way back. <laughs> On the way back, right, yeah. Yeah, so I can see that um, a number of our faculty would love to continue the conversation because it's quite inspiring to see how you merge, you know, how you involve students in research, having your master's and PhD students co-publish with faculty. I noticed, Harold, that your name was last on many of the publications. That's an issue we grapple with, who should get first authorship, who should be the last author, and so on. So I think the, uh, the first authorship sharing, is to is to the ones who do the work, the who do the do That's most right. of the work. So, um, okay, excellent. Yeah, we feel the same way too. But the professor's name can go on the publication too as last author. Yes. Uh, so we want to thank you for that. And I know um, you know Alpha Obika teaches in media management, and he's already asking for a copy of the Media Management Matters book. Uh, we'll definitely have to have you back because this topic we were talking more process today than the actual issue of location-based services, because I started thinking about how does this apply in the Caribbean region, in Jamaica, yes. and I wanted to get some specific examples of location-based services. Uh, you know, our markets are very small in the Caribbean. I wanted to know what is the size of the markets we're talking about here, and how did that factor into either the success or failure of location-based services? But I'm also reading it as a solution for the struggling legacy media who are trying to survive. And what I'm hearing you saying is that if they go the, the, the way of the route of location-based services, it's possible that they can maintain their readership, their following, and get more persons subscribing to their services. Am I correct? Yeah, but they have to change their mind and their mindset. <laughs> and so, okay. so completely yeah. change the mindset. So it's definitely a conversation that we'd love to continue and we definitely want to have you back to even keep us, you know, updated on the progress of this project, this ongoing project. Uh, so thank you again so much for sharing with us today. And so we have to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for be, for, for having us and thank, thank you, you for inviting us. And um, uh, uh, let me let me uh, uh, give you an invitation to Germany. So you're happily welcomed here in Salzgitter, which is quite in uh, right in the in the middle of Germany, uh, with plenty of possibilities to travel around Germany. So really happily right. invited to Germany. Sounds Once the borders wonderful. are open, 